Hi listeners, I wanted to share with you something that is going on and this is really pertinent right now. I am doing this advertisement as part of a charitable initiative in partnership with Ballot Ready and I'm not getting any um, money with this. This is an unpaid opportunity, but I really wanted to share with you. The goal of this initiative is to increase voter education and encourage you guys to get the vote out during the 2020 general election this November. Ballot Ready is a nonpartisan voter guide to every race and referendum. Most voters, you guys, will enter the booth knowing who you want to vote for president or governor or senator, but you're not prepared for everything else. But every position on the ballot matters. Judges, school boards, water commissioners, and city councils make the decisions that affect our everyday lives. A voter who goes to BallotReady.org can enter their address to see their entire ballot, and from there they can compare candidates based on stances, on issues, biography, or endorsements. Once they've made a decision, they can save their choices and use that when you go to the polls to vote. Voters can also use a requ um, also request a ballot to vote by mail and find their polling place and make a plan to vote. I hope that you'll take advantage of this. I know I'm going to because this and every opportunity to vote is the way that we continue to make sure that our voices are heard and that we are well represented. Welcome. You're listening to the Bulldog Educator Podcast, hosted by yours truly, Kirsten Wilson. Thank you so much for listening. Content produced in this episode and other episodes of The Bulldog Educator are by my co-producers, Sarah and David Galvez. Music created for The Bulldog Educator is by David Galvez. Podcast platform is through anchor.fm. Welcome to another episode of The Bulldog Educator with your host, Kirsten Wilson. I want to just take a minute and thank all my listeners who have been going on this journey with me, and I just appreciate that you continue to show up and listen for me. Those of you that have let me know, and whether it's through an email or just posting on the Bulldog EDU, um, either Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook page, thank you so much for your support. You're joining the Bulldog Educator Episode 4, Season 1. This topic of this Bulldog, um, Bulldog Educator podcast is exploring the world of sketchnoting. Last summer, I attended a conference where keynote Manuel Herrera presented the importance of sketchnoting. I had admired the sketchnoting work of Sylvia Duckworth. However, it truly overwhelms me. One quote, though, stuck with me in his talk Drawing is not an art, drawing is thinking. If I can't picture it, I can't understand it. And he quoted Albert Einstein. That planted a seed. I also started following Manuel Herrera on Twitter and did some surfing through the uh, Twitter via this hashtag sketchnoting. But it only saw it, saw, excuse me, sat in my thoughts and reflections for months. In mid-February, in my trolling of the hashtag sketchnoting, I came upon the hashtag doodle and chat. I saw that every Saturday at 9.33-ish, a one-hour session doodle is live on YouTube with Carrie Bauckham and her daughter, Annabeth. Carrie, by the way, is the author of the book, My Pencil Made Me Do It, A Guide to Sketchnoting. I continued to lurk through Twitter, and I didn't jump in as a participant until almost mid-April. At that point, schools across the country were in emergency remote teaching, and for the betterment of all, Carrie and Annabeth started an, um, offering a Wednesday session of the hashtag Doodle and Chat at 6.33-ish. Within that same window, I learned more about two-column notes, and um, which is a flexible version of Cornell Notes and graphic organizers, and the impact on learners in, gar in regards to reading comprehension and Tier 2 and Tier 3 vocabulary across content areas. All my synapses were firing at this point. I've since read Carrie's book, My Pencil Made Me Do It, and exploring my own understanding and comfort with sketchnoting. And these are th some things that I have come to learn about sketchnoting. Seven things, in fact. Number one, 
It uses both sides of the brain when you sketch note. The left side, which taps into the verbal, and the right side, which taps into the visual part of your learning, of your brain. Number two, it releases creativity, that choice in expression. Number three, it helps organize knowledge and fill the page organically. And we'll be right back with more information. Number four of those seven things I've come to learn about sketchnoting. It customizes note-taking, it's expedient, and it honors student voice. The fifth thing I learned about sketchnoting, it improves learning and cements that learning and makes that learning meaningful. Number six, it helps the person that is trying to understand the new learning see the big pack picture while capturing their thinking and helping them focus on what they need to focus on in the learning. And number seven, I also saw how it was applicable to many careers and life situations and really taps into those executive functions, functioning skills that every learner, whether they're young or old, should develop. Kevin Thorne says that sketchnoting is a form of visual writing by expressing ideas, concepts, and important thoughts in a meaningful flow by listening, processing, and transferring what you hear about sketchnoting, either by analog or digital. It can happen as a directed activity or by personal choice. Sylvia Duckworth states that sketchnoting is purposeful doodling while listening, reading, or watching something. It is also called visual note-taking. What I have learned as well is that there seems to be no one way you have to do sketchnoting. What I also learned in Bauckham's book is that it provides some great guidelines and suggestions, but all of them are guidelines or suggestions, not have-tos. Her YouTube channel, where she does her doodle and chat, also has offered a great support and a community of learners as well. I've been also enjoyed joining in with her doodle and chat live sessions to develop my quote unquote doodling voice. It's where I've discovered my two learning mascots, Freddie the Frenchie and Henrietta the Hedgehog. And by the time this goes live, I'll probably have a third learning mascot. As I kind of continue to look forward to adding other mascots. I'm also knowing that I'm just beginning this adventure and look forward to learning and sharing with learners, especially my adult learners that I lead within my organization and with those student learners that they will be leading. I love how it provides a platform for expression and for individual voice. I'm still working on remembering that sketch notes are not about art or perfection. Sketch notes are about ideas. And for me, they are also a practice of self care. One of the things that has really helped me during this crazy time of remote emergency learning is the ability to take a moment and do a quick draw when I just need to take a breath. So in addition to sketchnoting being an extremely beneficial to learners, it is also a great way for someone to take a moment and just stop and reflect and just embrace that um, little doodler of you, you that you were when you were a child. If you want to learn more about sketchnoting, like I did, you can follow on Twitter, Carrie Bauckham. Um, her handle is at heckawesome. You can also follow Manuel Herrera, which is really where I started to enter into this world of sketchnoting. And he's at Manuel Herrera 33. And Sylvia Duckworth, with which, with which many of us educators may already be familiar with, at Sylvia Duckworth um, to find more there. That's a great place to start if you're wanting to explore the world of sketchnoting. I will also tell you that the sketchnoting community is extremely welcoming. 
The Doodle and Chat community in particular is the most welcoming and encouraging and passionate, compassionate virtual community I've ever stumbled onto. And I have been parts of several virtual communities. And I am so glad that I finally moved from curiosity and lurking to embracing it so that I could then share what I'm learning about this for my teachers, my students, and me. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to joining you again real soon. This is Kirsten Wilson signing off. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Bulldog Educator, hosted by yours truly, Kirsten Wilson. You can find The Bulldog Educator on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram using the handle at thebulldogedu. That's at thebulldogedu. You can also find us in content related to education and this podcast on our blog at thebulldogedu.org.